Okay, we're almost there. Let's keep going through the character episodes. Man, I wish that after you finish one of them, at least the cursor would go back to wherever you were on the list instead of going all the way back to Alyssa at the top, but whatever. Let's see if I remember how to play Raven. <laughs> He's upside down. Special ops missions for the UN's independent force established by Victor Chevalier, codenamed Raven. In order to deal with the worsening chaos of current world affairs, Raven trained diligently under the master who taught Eastern martial arts to Victor. As he honed his fighting skills, the now headless Mishima Zaibatsu announced the King of Iron Fist tournament. With his training complete, Raven decided to join the tournament in hopes of placing the Mishima Zaibatsu under UN control. Witness my evolved ninjutsu. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament. First up. Commencing mission. Get ready for the next battle! Round one. Fight! For a ninja, Raven's not as nimble as, like, Mina. He just fell right backwards and then bounced back up. You can't go home yet, Raven. The tournament's not over. Get ready for the next battle. Round one. Fight. We haven't seen that much of Horang today either. Like he's not involved in very many other people's stories. Oh, that was so cool. For the next battle. Let Uri do it back. Let him set up to look at Round one. Fight. Yeah, some of the some of the sound effects feel like they're a little bit delayed again. But I don't want to restart my game. Like, I don't want to restart with a PlayStation, so I'll just deal with it. It only seems to do that for some people, too. Get ready for the next battle. I cannot call you a ninja. Round one. Fight. I 
I love how I recognize so many of Yoshimitsu's attacks from Soul Calibur. Since I'm much more versed in Soul Calibur than I am in Tekken. That's a cool windscreen. That's a cool windscreen. The final match! Get ready for the next battle. Witness the results of my training. Round one. Fight! <laughs> Oh, shoot. It's like, what's happening? What a badass. <laughs> I am sorry to interrupt, sir. Te voilà. Quel combat incroyable. J'ai senti mon sang bouillir. Forgive me. What? Raven is dead. What does this mean? Huh? How did that get there? Raven. Tu commanderas désormais ton unité sous le nom de Code Great Raven. I'm honored. Il y a une dame qui m'attend. Continue de faire du bon travail. Tu es en charge du reste. Victor's so cool. <laughs> aye aye, sir. He swapped out his like tattoo in the middle of a fight. <laughs> Okay, Reyna. So she's another one where you actually have to unlock it by beating the main story first, so... Reyna, the secret daughter of Heihachi Mishima, attended Mishima Polytechnical School. She loved and respected her father, whom she saw as a role model, but Heihachi vanished after his defeat by Kazuya Mishima. The now headless Mishima Zaibatsu put on the new The King of Iron Fist tournament in order to choose a new head of the organization. Reina entered the tournament to take over the Mishima Zaibatsu and carry on her father's legacy. Like, if she's Jin's aunt, but she's like younger than he is, that's so weird. Welcome to. Then again, I guess it's similar to the situation with 
Lars as well, because I don't think Lars is like that much older, but he's Jin's uncle, technically. Round one. Fight. She brings her own throne, that is cool. I love her animations. They really show off her personality. Oh, my sound is still delayed. For the next battle. I think one of my favorite things about Reina has to be her voice. J'espère que tu n'es pas un de ces incompétents à l'esprit limité. Round one. Fight. <coughs> Going sickle mode. Final Fight. I love her lightning effects too.
Thanks for the stretch, Kieran. I appreciate it. The final match. Get ready for the next battle. I don't see a suitable cliff. Oh, she's fantastic. His face is on the moon. She even faked us out. She's so cool. <laughs> Shaheen! I really like the new outfit they gave him for this game. Personal security specialist Shaheen received a request from a Monaco oil magnate to secretly protect his daughter from assassins sent by G Corporation. That's quite the sentence. Was well known by him. He suspected their involvement in the death of the friend who bequeathed him his sword. Just then, his client said she was joining the King of Iron Fist tournament held by G Corp's adversary, the Mishima Zaibatsu. Shaheen decided that he too would join the tournament and headed to the arena with the sword of his late friend. Falitahdar G Corporation Al. Lana smahla kum bil harabi bidali kabadalan. for the next 
Round one. Fight. Yeah, if he takes enough damage, the head cover does come off. Just like uh, Asuka's hat and Nina's glasses. What's his fighting style? Uh, it was on the screen like like a minute ago, and I already forgot what it was. Close quarters combat. Yeah, that's what it said. Thank you, Aru. Also, in the other Tekken games, usually when you customize the characters and you take their default outfits, you could take off like the shirt, the pants, and the headpieces separately. But in this game, their default outfits all come as one piece, so you can't just like remove a part of it or swap out one part of a section of it. Unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. It feels like a little bit of a step down, but. Then they usually have like, in this game I've noticed everyone has like, one or two alternate versions of their regular outfit, which is just their regular outfit with a couple pieces missing. Like if they're wearing a jacket, it'll be the version without the jacket. For example, oh there we go, see, this headpiece came up. Um, right now I'm doing the character episodes, so the stages and the opponents are preset. That's why we keep fighting in the same arena. <laughs> That's why we're not fighting on the moon. Does anyone in Tekken use Krav Maga? Not in- I don't think in this Tekken game. I don't remember if there's a character that uses it in another one. I know Dead or Alive has a character that uses it. I think some of Dragonov's attacks are also similar. Tekken has a pretty, if you look at all the Tekken games, they have a pretty big roster of characters. Which is why when they do like, the Tekken Tag Tournament spin-off series, they usually put like everyone in. And then the roster gets like, ridiculously large. Round one. Fight! You're finished! Nina's outfit is slave, but it's so impractical to fight in. Don't worry, she's a trained assassin. She does all those ridiculous things in her heels. 
and it's fine. And her sunglasses. He has the Kiro haircut underneath his headpiece. I guess he does. The beard kind of makes it less obvious. Tu as surgi de nulle part. Je ne pensais quand même pas être prise pour cible ici. Miyote, c'était quoi ça, maman t'en y a là? Iya, qu'est-ce que tu vas? Quoi t'as qu'un? Ya, quoi? Un grand pan de la G Corporation a été arrêté. La personne qui t'a confié l'épée peut reposer en paix. Non, un petit moi. Que dirais-tu de prolonger ton travail de garde du corps à mes côtés Yame Toki, coïtsu no omori nanka karada ga ikutsu atte mo tamae wa. Anto ma tatata mon teratan. Oui, il faudrait avoir le crâne aussi épais que celui d'Aska pour me protéger. Tenta, ima uchi no koto baka ni shita ro. Oh, that's nice. I'm surprised I didn't Shahin didn't fight Kazuya cuz he has a special fight intro. With Kazuya, because Kazuya is behind the death of his friend. They show it off in his trailer. Okay, now it's time for Steve! They kind of changed Steve's Upon voice for this game. I think. Steve Fox solved the mystery surrounding his origins. Having lost his purpose, a visit from sparring partners Paul Phoenix and Martial Law spurred the boxer toward a new goal. Fortunately, he heard news of the King of Iron Fist tournament that would decide the new head of the Mishima Zaibatsu. Steve decided to join the tournament with plans to use the Mishima Zaibatsu coffers in service of his new goal. I can't change the past, but I can forge my own future. Also, Lily is in a lot of other people's endings. I know she's popular. Get ready for the next battle. Don't miss me winning. I like how they both looked at the camera. I forgot Steve doesn't actually... The kick buttons don't really do anything for him. Because he's a boxer. So the, the, the kicks just make him duck and weave, which is kind of cool. Because in Tekken, you use the four buttons to control each character's limbs. So there's like a right punch, left punch, left kick, right kick. You win. He just pulls out a boxing ring out of nowhere inside another arena. <laughs> It's so funny. Round one. Fight. <laughs> Yeah. 
Sekiro color palette. I guess you're right. My new main. Get ready for the next battle. I've never really used Shaheen that much before, but he's pretty cool. Round one. Fight. I usually use the kick buttons to hit people when they're down on the ground, because the, the punches usually don't reach that far down, but with Steve, it's kind of hard to do. Because he doesn't have any kicks. Punches chain together really well. I mean, I, they have to, he's a boxer. the most, you definitely win. Round one. Fight. I feel like Steve probably talks more than Horang. I'm just saying. It takes one to know one, right? of the biggest boxing tournament in the world now, after all. Man, must be nice to be rich. With the Mishima Zaibatsu's assets at his disposal, Steve hosts a boxing tournament on a scale the likes of which had never been seen. First, he easily claimed the title of middleweight champion, followed by the super middleweight title, light heavyweight, <laughs> Then cruiserweight. One after another, the championship belt fell into his hands. That belt means he's won four different weight divisions. He really pummeled him. <laughs> 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 
He's finally ready for the heavyweight champion next. Yeah, I can't wait. Hey, Steve, we're here to bother you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he is bulking. Hey, is Steve here? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yo, you too. Long time no see. <laughs> With that oh, voice. It's me. I'm totally ready. What? <laughs> With that voice. <laughs> he's he's becoming like Bob. Tekken had has another character named Bob, and he's like very heavy and big, and his backstory is that. Like, he used to be, um, slim, and he, like, lost a fight because he wasn't- he didn't have enough, like, weight behind his attacks or something like that. So then he resolved to, like, make himself larger, so he just bulked up and made himself huge. But he's still, like, as a fighter, he's still pretty nimble and quick as far as, like, big characters go. And then in Tekken Tag Tournament, too, they made it so you could play as Bob and also Slim Bob. Steve's going that route, except he's, his bulking up is a bit different than Bob's, but... Okay, let's see what Victor has to to offer us. That was such, that was such a weird ending. Victor Chevalier is the legendary founder of the UN's Independent Forces Unit, and is known by his codename Phantom Raven. The Admiral worked tirelessly for world peace, and to end the ever-expanding conflict between the Mishima Zaibatsu and G Corporation. Amidst his efforts, the King of Iron Fist Tournament was announced in order to choose the next head of the Mishima Zaibatsu. Believing a UN-controlled conglomerate could bring an end to the war, Victor took up his beloved Takemikazuchi blade and joined the tournament. His blade seul à pouvoir contrôler l'équilibre des puissances de ce monde. This blade's called Takemikazuchi. <laughs> Get ready for the next battle. C'est un honneur d'affronter un véritable samouraï. Round one. Fight. Are Yoshi Mitsu's fingers in this outfit human? Like he's like a cyborg, right? But that means he has some human components, right? <laughs> Just shoots him point blank with the gun. Victor's pretty fun. Get ready for the next battle. I hate rich people. <laughs> Round one. Fight. Oh la la. Oh la la. <laughs> No, you weren't here earlier. It was funny because when you play Law's story, he says I hate rich people to every single one of his opponents because all his opponents are just the rich characters. It was so funny. He's so relatable. A three-star restaurant? Why not a five-star restaurant? Why is your scale on a three? Montre-moi ce que ton entraînement t'a appris. See your officer or not, I'm not pulling any punches. Round one. Fight! Oh, 
I like how it looked like he was about to pull out his sword, and then he just steps on your foot. You gotta, you gotta trick him, you gotta juke him. Victor is such an interesting combination of character traits. He's got like the teleporty thing, he's like a samurai, but he's also like a special agent, he's he's French, he works for the United Nations, he looks like Colonel Sanders, like he's Raven's master or new new boss, I guess. Ooh, that looks cool. You win. Cela devrait apprendre à ne plus te mêler de nos affaires. And now, the final match. Get ready for the next battle. Cela faisait longtemps. Ange blanc de la mort. Round one. Fight. It was good that Admiral Victor won and brought Mishima Zaibatsu under the UN's control, but the G Corporation hasn't stopped causing violence. Yeah, we're almost at the port. I hope nothing happens. This is a giant poster in the back. Oh, speak of the devil. Ne tirez pas ici, imbécile. Je m'en charge. Et un autre. Merci. Et encore un. C'est le dernier. Trop lent. Vous, occupez-vous de nettoyer ça. Je fais attendre une dame importante. Don't tell me he deployed a submarine to impress a woman. Is this normal in France? No, it's just him. This is the second time he's mentioned meeting a girl for a date. 
is being a ladies' man like part of his character personality? I guess it must be. Oh, just three left to go. Ling Xiaoyu searched all around the world in order to find the missing Jean Kazuma. Despite multiple reported sightings throughout the Middle East, his trail suddenly went cold, nearby preventing their reunion from happening. Around this time, she caught word of the latest the King of Iron Fist tournament and its goal of determining the next head of the Mishima Zaibatsu. Thinking her victory and access to the conglomerate's resources would help her track down Jin, Xiao Yu decided to enter the tournament. Yeah, let's go, Miss Xiao Yu. I like how that intro picture of her sitting on the roof was the same as the one in Panda's intro, but without Panda in it. I love her new outfit in this game. Ready for the next battle. Round one. Fight. In previous games, none of her outfits really like jive with me that much. But this one is like really. Here in one of your first games ever was Tekken 3, next and Xiao Yu was your main. Cool. Round one. Fight. Yeah, I agree. Having the yellow or the orange as an accent color instead of her main color looks so much better. <laughs> the ruffles kind of look like sunflower petals. You're right. I guess they're like phoenix feathers. Oh, what a cute wind pose. Get ready for the next battle. Round one, fight! <laughs> For the next battle, Round one. Fight. <laughs> Fight. 
We're gonna fight Panda. Panda. The final match. Get ready for the next battle. Oh, I guess we found Jin. She has a custom intro with Panda, and we didn't see that one during the Pandas either. He's dead now. I knocked him out. Look at this outfit. Jin ran off again. Oh, he's right there. This is literally just Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> <laughs> Claudio. Yoshimitsu time. Yoshimitsu, the head of the Manji clan, recently sensed an unknown voice calling out to him for reasons he did not quite understand. The voice grew louder by the day, until he finally realized it to be the voice of his sword, the Cursed Blade sharing his name. Yoshimitsu came to the conclusion that his blade must be resonating with some sort of sinister power. And so the chivalrous thief set out on a journey guided by his blade, in order to halt this evil at its source. for the next battle. Oh cool, finally a different stage. Round one. Fight. I guess this music is more for this stage than it is. I keep thinking it's specifically like Xiao Yu's theme or something like that, because we saw her here, but. Literally stab him in the gut. Oh gosh. Oh, <laughs> you're dead. Oh, finally a different stage. We haven't gone to this stage at all. Time to die. 
Round one. Fight. Of course it's Lee's mansion. Ow. I want to fight on the alpaca stage. Oh, and then we're back to the Coliseum. Round one. Fight. Just immediately transform. you in the foot with my sword. Oh no, I don't want to fight you. I thought I was going to fight Devil Kazuya. See, he has like human fingers. Fight. Okay, at least this time I have a sword. So I have a little bit of reach. No! No! I was so close! Oh god. I, I dodged that by pure chance. He's so big he covers his own HP bar, right? Ow, no! Why do I have to fight you? Oh god. Good that was that's my first actual loss of today. Fight. <laughs> He's so unfair. Also his hitbox is really weird. Because he's like crouching forward.
There we go. Oh, I'm probably going to have to fight him as Zafina too. <laughs> Brian said another word. He said, come on. Where's he getting all this stuff? <laughs> Get a brain blast. This guy's literally out here getting possessed by a demon sword, and meanwhile Xiaoyu is being all girly pop. He <laughs> he with Jin under the moonlight. <laughs> You're not wrong. Last character. Azazel, the resurrected original devil, had been sealed in Zafina's left arm several months prior, and yet the pulsation of his evil had grown stronger by the day. Zafino sought out Claudio Serafino, the most powerful practitioner of the serious marksman. The Exorcist revealed that Azazel must materialize if he is to be destroyed completely. And so, Zafina embarked on a journey to bestow a temporary measure of strength to the demon. When you dared show your face again, Azazel, that was your demise. Get ready for the next battle! Her movements are so interesting. Remember when they first revealed her in her debut Tekken game? I think I, I, I thought she was almost like moving like Valdo from Soul Calibur. And she's another one of those characters where their their fighting style is just a vague like description of something fictional, like ancient assassination arts or whatever. But I think it's cool to have a character that's almost like a contortionist sort of. And I really like her redesign for this game, making her for the next battle. Azazel Claw her new like character fighting trait. Hey Mabufula, welcome to the stream! Thank you so much for following me. Welcome, welcome. Fight. Battle. 
Oh, I'm probably gonna have to end up fighting Azazel. That was a pretty cool combo. Oh, I got a crawling stance. I like the music for this stage too. Again, the music in this Tekken game has been phenomenal. The other Tekken games have good music, but again, they haven't left a lasting impression on me the same as this game seems to have. All these stage music sound like they're from like either Metal Gear Rising or Nier or or like Final Fantasy XIV, which all have really great soundtracks. Well, maybe I get to fight Devil Kazuya instead of Azazel. Oh no, I'm probably fighting him. Round one. Fight. That kick is pretty cool. Oh, Devil Kazuya, okay, sweet. I didn't want to fight Azazel. <laughs> And I think it would have been kind of hard to fight him as a, as a Fina. We did it! You win. This is your fate. Power of the devil. Return to my left arm! Azazel. Be sealed! Devil's power has now been sealed inside this crystal. Claudio, the time is now. Demone in mondo, sparisci per sempre.
that's a pretty cool ending to end off on. Thanks for the stretch, Kieran. I appreciate it. But now we're finished everyone's character episodes. Of course, they'll probably release some for the DLC characters when they come out, but we'll probably wait until they're all out before we tackle those. So let's see, let's let's review. Alyssa had some pretty good endings. I think hers and Jack's were pretty funny because they're kind of interlinked together. Lily had some I mean Lily's ending was okay, but I think she appeared in a lot of other people's. Brian's was surprisingly <laughs> amusing. I I'm just trying to remember who's is who's what happened in each one. Yeah, Jax was kind of funny. Jin's was sweet, but a little sad. Jin's was also sweet. Some of the, the some of the endings had really good fight scenes. Like King's ending had a really good fight scene. Kuma's ending was kind of weird. Law anything with Law involved in it was funny too. Law's ending. Paul's ending. Steve's ending was so weird. Feng's ending was also kind of surprisingly funny. Just because of Leroy. Leroy with Lily. Yeah, Steve's Steve's is memorable for the wrong reasons. I think Jin and Jin's were sweet. Which one made me laugh the most though? Surprisingly, had a good chuckle for Brian's. Fangs actually was pretty funny because it starts off feeling really serious, and then oh, actually no, Dragonovs was actually Dragonovs is one of the best ones. I forgot about his. Dragonovs is one of the best ones, and I like Jax as well. Look at all my fight money. Oh, I still need to look into how to get the the true true ending. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, I might have already figured it out and posted it. So then next time we stream, I the last thing I want to do is the arcade quest. Now I thought that this would be like really long. But according to online, and again, I can't really trust what the people online say, considering that they misled me on the story mode of this game, but someone, people are saying Arcade Quest is only like one or two hours long, but I saw some bits of it from other people playing it, even like before the game was released. Because I, I think it was in the demo as well, and it felt like it'd be a lot longer and more in-depth, because it also doesn't feel like something that requires a lot of dev time. Like once they come up, once they come up with all the base models, and the areas, like the arcades, you don't really need that much extra development because there aren't really any special cutscenes or, or like, excessive voice acting required. So I expected Ar Arcade Quest to be kind of long-ish, but then I figured, I guess it's all supposed to be a tutorial to the game, so that's why it's not super long. So we'll do Arcade Quest, and then I think that will wrap up pretty much everything for this game in terms of what I want to stream until the DLC characters drop, which, which which will be fun. I really want them to bring back Fakumram, because he was one of my favorite characters from Tekken 7, and he was one of the later DLC additions to that game, so I hope they bring him back, because he was pretty cool. And he's definitely a character that doesn't really strike me as something that I would normally enjoy, but he was just so fun to play. Yeah, thank you for coming by, everyone. I really appreciate it. Let's find someone to raid for today. Let's see, let's see. Okay, Yui's streaming again. He's doing Cult of the Lamb. That sounds like fun. Okay, 
Stick around for a raid. I'll see you guys. I might stream tomorrow afternoon. I might feel like it, so we'll see. Otherwise, then, the next stream will be... Probably Monday. The schedule will be out tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Take care. Have a good night. And thank you for so much for joining me for Tekken 8. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it as well. Bye-bye.